Hi everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's and my daughter Debbie, who's doing our camera today. Hello. We are very excited to start a weekly program that is going to be We are back. We are back. <laughs> <laughs> Good or bad, we're back. I don't know. Thank you so much. Uh, many of you have commented when you've come into our store to uh, say, even though we have masks on, it's hard to notice them. We'll say, oh, that's Linda or that's Debbie. And they hear our voice right. and they say, oh, I know that voice. And they really do. Most of you have been really complimentary. And that really means a lot to us because we hope that we were helping you through a difficult time. And we still have some difficult times. So we have promised you that we would do a definite video every single week and these are free for you on our YouTube channel and so today I've really prepared a lengthy one it's probably about maybe 25 minutes because it's going to teach you about a different kind of project but before we get into it I want to show one of my quilts that I think is this is mine. I think I'm we showed to... the top before it was done. We Didn't we show the this. top? Right. This no, was it's finished. the piece that I bought in Indian from Studio Badru, which is in the north uh, west oh, it's corner. Hard to see it all. And these pieces, these are all batiks. But what is really special about them is many of them have been hand blocked. Well, they're all hand blocked, but some of them have yeah, actually so been done with the uh, block that was carved many, many, many years ago. So very, very old blocks. And um, some of my videos, you've seen the blocks, the way they have been carved, and we've shown you a couple of them. Well, this piece was all hand sewn. Uh, it was not sewn real well. The whole top. You mean right, the whole top. top. But uh -huh. the reason I love the piece is because of the um, individual blocks. I thought they That's were true. so spectacular. Yeah, look at the hand, everyone. That's so That's sweet. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, hand print. so what we have done, I had taken this with the original piece. There was like the bottom I had to take off, but then I took our batiks from our batik walls because we have lots of batiks in our This store. is one Hundreds. of the, can I tell what it is? This is a sure. 60 inch wide batik that we have uh, a few bolts left of different colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if this particular color is still there. It might be a little bit left, but uh, we have different colors of our 60-inch wide batiks. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I thought it was so cool. And then I took the hand, uh, the binding, and most of you know that when I bind my quilts, I really like to do them by hand. And so I've got a each, you know, in each individual stitch. And then you can see there's a little um, corner on the end Light, of each. We just corners. fold it, right? Mm -hmm. And this is... Um, Actually, it would make a lovely tablecloth <laughs> without a little bit heavy. putting food on. <laughs> no food allowed. I'm going to use Especially it not as spaghetti a, and meat sauce. Right. Never. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to use it as a wrap to put it in the... Well, um, it's a little bit warm today. It was about 90 right, degrees yeah. today out but there. I'm but I'm going to use it for, um, if I'm watching TV. But sure. I'm going to grab something here, and it's called soak, because a lot of people oh, have asked me... Oh, you just turned me, your machine you know, on. Just better turn that off, right? Whoop. Oh, okay. <laughs> in my laundry room again. <laughs> we do have Speaking a Speaking laundry machine. Oh, yes. Dear. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yes. We do have a beautiful new studio, but uh, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, they were filming something else. Now we're so busy all the time that we thought it, for our first one for the first week, now we're going to do this, like I said, every week, we would bring it back home here. But this, if you haven't used this before, this is called Soak, and it's absolutely wonderful. It's and really... all those hundreds of quilts that I brought back from India where there's only about... 20 of them left. I put them in every single one. I put in the washing machine with this, just a couple Gentle cycle. Of, yep, gentle. And then I threw it in the dryer. Threw it? Well, carefully <laughs> put it in the dryer. <laughs> and then, okay. I, then I took a few things of bounce, you know, the the, um, in the sensitive one. Or, you mean this thing oh, right here? <laughs> that bounce? <laughs> yes, right, okay. That right, that so, guy. So um, allergy free. So mm -hmm. you will see now, I can throw this when I want to wash it again. I will be able to put that in the machine and then put it in here because it. I did do the, the free motion quilting on it. I don't know if they can see that up close, but it's really pretty fun. It was nothing real um, unusual. We just wanted to hold these pieces together real well so that they would not come mm -hmm. apart at all pretty and really pretty show nice. off the individual blocks. So mm -hmm. we are going to try and make up a kit like this because you see they're just like, what would you say, Debbie, six inch blocks? Five um, inch, it's real small. Probably six inch blocks, yeah, that's I correct. So. Uh -huh. And so what we're going to they're do- They're not is, all even, but they're very pretty. Yeah, and we'll, we'll, we're going to 
put a kit together. It won't be quite this long. It might be a little bit um, shorter, but we want to put a kit together so that you can easily try some batiks. They're really fun to work with. Now, project for the day. I'm actually wearing the jacket. It's not going to do the whole jacket. We're showing you hemming. Actually, I did it on the shirt and I did it on this. Um, you actually little, hemmed. And you notice how it it's supposed to be a fashion statement, of course, where it's a little it's like shorter. A, like a bolero kind of a look. Else, but, uh -huh. but it was not this way originally. It was down to here. And I want to show you what happened when I did throw it in the washing machine. You've had this it got happen. caught by a zipper or something. Uh, it was a there was a safety pin in there that was open, Ooh. so it just shredded the bottom. So I decided I didn't want to throw it away. So and I make I lemonade out of lemons. And you can see the the hem is done with a narrow cover hem, and so I just pin this with very small glass head pins, and then I do a very simple. Let's see if you can see it up here a little bit easier. That's see that's the underside right. where the loopers are, and that's a two thread uh, cover hem right, stitch. Right, the narrow. Two, two needles, right. And this is done on the um, Baby Lock Triumph. Now, if you had another type of um, cover, cover hem, hem, it would be the machine. You could do it on the same way. I have a Brother um, 3550 that I could do this on too, but the Baby Lock just threads so quickly that I wanted to use it. Now, this is the shirt that I'm, I'm sorry, going to I'm show in. in the video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how many of you have, uh, when you travel, you always grab a t-shirt from wherever you went? Well, this was my first time to Australia. It was just a wonderful, um, wonderful trip. And so I'm showing you th these shirts. These people in Australia are very tall. <laughs> and it was, here I am in this shirt was about down to here. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure I had to take about four inches off of it at least. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that in a moment. But here um, are some of the, on my table here, are some of the items that I think are essential when I'm doing a shirt like this where I'm hemming it. And I'll show it to you because it's actually finished. So if any of you are vertically <laughs> challenged like my mother. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. See how it's a wide cover hem? If you turn it to the back, you can see the, the zigzag on the yep. bottom of it. Okay. Very nice. Now, yep. in the video, with all the steps, because we did the steps before we did the introduction. It's kind yeah, of yeah Nikki will not be happy with this, but, <laughs> but he'll, he'll make it a magical work. For, he'll edit it and make it magic. Right, so it'll flow together. But I wanted to show you all of the pieces that I'm using when I do a cover hem. First of all, you do need to have a good ruler. You could use this a This is metal. a heat resistance ruler, this one. Right, heat and press something, but... I love this because you can put this right under your hem. Now I have another shirt that I'm making that I want to show you. And you can see I can put it right under there and I know it's going to be perfect. I take it to the iron to this wonderful Laura Star. Mm -hmm. Now when you're doing a dark knit like this or you're doing something very, this is a very delicate fabric. Mm -hmm. So if you can see what I've done on here, I can take this and I have got a plate on here because these are sold. delicate. Sold, right. right. Now do you see how I can take it off? And I'm putting it back on again just You like need it on for when you have delicate fabric, so you take it off right. when you, wait. Okay, no, don't, don't put steam. these, no. Okay. <laughs> this is so, your phone, Mom. This is not my phone, so. Uh -oh. <laughs> I mean, I could have just stayed there, but I do. And the exciting news, not oh. only is it pressed this oh, beautiful There hand. is some exciting news about Laura Star, everyone. Says, Remember in all of our videos how I've been talking about the Laura Star and saying that I love it for pressing my, I'm looking for one of my masks. Every time I take a mask out of the dryer, I take and I steam this. I steam the clothes, I steam all kinds of things. It has now been proven that this is um, COVID. I don't know how they say it, but it, it does kills, kill COVID. It kills the COVID. I remember we couldn't say that before because they hadn't done all the lab tests, but they've done tons of lab tests. I'm, I'm, I kind so of it's an official Laura doing. Star announcement is right, what it it's is. A big announcement. It's, it's not our announcement. It's a Laura Star announcement. Right. It's been going all over the news. It's all over Switzerland. And so if you have a Laura Star, even the um, the lift or the big one like this, that steam can, is going to kill it. Can I say so, something? Because sure. what they recommended too at Laura Star is that people like who have to wear uniforms oh, yeah. like the police or the first responders right. or the people in the hospitals and things like that and they don't want to have to wash their uniform every single day you can just steam 
Well, it's not on their body, Mom. <laughs> no, they could them. hang it on a hanger and then steam then it. Steam it, yeah. Right, right. steam right. it, and it would kill anything Everything. that could be lingering. Right, absolutely. And you know, all these nurses that are coming in from outside, and then they have to take everything off, and they throw it in the dryer, and then they steam it afterwards. So Very anyway, good. that was one of my Okay, so that was the first thing. So let's there's another back. smaller version of that same ruler that you were Right, I cut it in half, actually. You, you did? did cut them, yeah, I just cut it. Because I know there's a smaller you version can, and a bigger there version is, of that you can, ruler. You could actually just cut these. And that's made by Clover. One. Yeah, we have it on our website. And then the other thing I want to show you, because when you're changing your needles, and I'm going to show you all this in the video that follows this, this is a little needle threader that I've shown you, but I don't know if you can get it real close. You see how there's a little blade there? Right it's, here? A, it's, it's actually a little crochet hook that catches right. the thread, so and I've, it will pull it right through. So it pushes I bring it, it right through. I bring it down the needle, Sorry, and I've it. actually demonstrated that after we're through with this. You'll see it. And it pushes the thread pushes through the through. hole of the eye of the needle. And what is really wonderful about this, even though this isn't a um, needle, it's a pin, this does hold your needle to the flat side. See how there's a flat side there? Let me go close in. Because your needle, you want it flat so when you're going through it. See. It's hard to see. It's a actually. really, really wonderful tool. It's hard to yeah, see. Yeah, we can see it. It's no, kind of... it's not. It's not focusing. Oh, well. All right. Well, Sorry, it's... guys. But it, there is a, it's like a half moon shape. This That's is my for needles. hexagon um, little um, ruler that, I mean, uh, screwdriver. screwdriver that I, of course, will. Um, tool. Let's just call it a tool. Yeah. And I, I tighten my threads with it. This again is your other uh, hemming most ruler. Most of you have got these where it moves up and down, and that's a good one too. But the, these I love. I am using both the pins and the clips, and I wanted to show you why. When you are hemming a shirt or a garment, now you can see this is one of our shirts that we have in our store. It's actually on our website too. It's called the three quarter inch um, shirt. I love it. I've used it on many, many of our uh, videos. And again, they're way too long for me. So I take and divide this into qu in two quarters. And you can see I start at the side seam with a clip and over here with a clip and here and here with the clip. Then I take my pins because I'm going to sew on the right side with that cover hem. And then I put my pins and they're very easy to pull out. These are fine when you're working on a quilt binding or whatnot, but I only use these for the measuring. And then when I'm doing a knit shirt, I always use these real fine glass head pins that you can see are very easy to pull in and pull out. Of the knit. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're real, real easy to do it. I'm going to now measure this and I'm going to probably, I look at the original hem always and you can see on this one that it is a, a wide cover. Now remember on the other knit shirt that I did, because these are heavier fabrics, do you see how it's wide too? Mm -hmm. Now on these two shirts, I brought these out because these are old, I've had them for a long time and I've done a, all those, this is a narrow cover. Oh, Let's I like see. the narrow better myself. Yeah, the narrow is really a, a nice look. And then again, this is a narrow, let's mm -hmm. see, again, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a little bit of an idea. Then, and let me so show you what other- you those two at the time too? Oh yes. You did it at, oh, Absolutely. okay. Absolutely, yeah. okay. Then on these, I wanna show you, Fray Check is an absolute must, and you're gonna see that in my video. This is the little hooky things that I'm talking about because you will go in and pull the threads back at the end because you don't want those serger threads laying out there or you don't want to cut them right off because they, they, then right, all this can, can undo, yeah, be just undone. unravel right away. Then, um, so we've shown you that and that and that, but these are... American. I see people come in the store every day looking for those. They're a micro. And somehow they, they're hard to find, but I know where they are. So we you just ask them. me if you come in, I'll yeah. I know where they are. And they're on our website. I have also, to have a on little bit on here. It goes into the smallest areas of your machine, especially a surgery where you can't get it. Now, you want to use this one for the bigger areas and then for the tiny little areas under your hook. See, if you keep your machine really clean and neat, you won't have any issues with tension. It's called so they're micro, micro brush. Like, yeah, micro brush. And we micro have brush. them right on our mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. Then I'm putting them here. Of course, I always have a little very easy. These are a little embroidery scissor that I can clip. But even more important than that one, I use this because then I don't have to get my fingers in it. And if you haven't seen this little 
tiny clip there. That's probably one of the best Oops. things that you've ever seen, I'm zooming on especially the with the serger, because you want to be able to get in there and just clip the threads real quickly. Mm -hmm. And the last, well, here, I want to talk about the thread because I love this metrazine cone thread and I only needed three of them. And it and is, this is for your serger. This is Surger for your serger. Right. It's a surging thread and you can see it's got the pink cone so you'll know what color. Now, this is my, you've seen this in many of my videos. And the reason why this is so good, once you have done this cover hem, cover hem over here, you need to come in here and clip and go in with that really close scissor. Really without close. Touching this, without because touching the... If um, you look again, look at how close that is. And this has been wow. washed after this so has you been trimmed that right next that to it. close. And it looks like I've just been really, really good with measuring. Well, I've been really, really good with And it's with sheer, cutting. so you can see through, so you really want that to be straight. Right. And that's, yep. that's the way that you will get it with... The, these are the uh, Quilter Select... Um, they're called the duck bill and they, but it's like but, a pointed duck, but bill. there's a, yeah, I don't know if there's another name for it, but it's on our website again. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be without those. I have met everyone. So I hope that helps you. Now you're going to uh, go right into the video to, to look and see how we did this. I'm going to redo this. And this is a shirt that we're actually sewing on in the video. And, and I'm going to finish the video up with this little um, thing to actually show you how I pull it through so you can see what we do with the threads at the end. Okay. So I enjoy this, guys. I know everybody asks me a lot, how do you do those hems? <laughs> this is how you do it. Okay. So we will see you next week at Thursday morning at 8 o'clock. This is the hem of the um, ready-made shirt. As I mentioned before, it's a shirt I bought when we were traveling, when we could travel. Uh, from Australia, and you can see um, on many of the shirts that I'm sure many of you buy, they're either too long or they're not at the right angle or you want to change them a little bit. And one of the great things, I'm, this is a very simple little thing to do. You can see that I have measured up from the bottom of the actual shirt four inches. Now this was done with a cover hem, and I'm going to make a cover hem on here again. I used some really, really nice glass head pins that are heat resistant, and I will have those exact um, pins and the sizes on our website so you'll know what they are. This, um, it's called the um, Perfect uh, Hot Press or Press Perfect Hot Ruler. And what's wonderful about it is when I get ready to press this, if I didn't want to use the pins, I could put that right under there and then I can go ahead and put the iron right on top of this and it will press it perfectly. This happens to be a very wide hem, so I think it would be a little difficult if you didn't do the pins on here. And of course, when you start to measure, that's the important part, you start on each seam, figure out, try it on, figure out how much you wanna bring up on this one. It was four inches, because it was a very long shirt. And then I take the pin on each side over here, and then I make it measured into fours, so on this side, and then I go again, measure it into half, measure into half, on this side into half, and this side into half, and then I just pin them equally so that they are um, real easy to remove as I'm stitching along. Uh, I actually did this, pinned them on the wrong side. You could have easily put them on the right side too, uh, they're going to be real easy to take out because they are a glass head pin that will slip out real easy. But I wanted to do this for you to be able to see it from the inside. Uh, normally, I would pin them on the other side because I'm actually on the right side is where I'm going to do the cover hem. And I'm going to do another quick little video on this. It'll be combined with this to show you how to do a cover hem. And I'm doing mine on the uh, Baby Lock Triumph. But you, any cover hem that you have would work for this same process. So hope that gives you a little bit of help for the pinning process. And then we'll go on and I'll show you the sewing part. Before I start to sew, I want to set up my machine with the proper needles and, of course, the right threads. And on this particular machine, which is the Baby Lock Triumph, it's just a really nice serger that has air threading so I can 
very easily do the threading on this, but I want to show those of you that don't have it what you can do. This particular one, there's a little, um, it's a quick reference thread guide, and you can see on here there are, um, it says to start with the C1 and the C3 needles. So if you look back over here, you can see I have C1, which is here, and C3, which is here. They're the needles in the front that are threaded. I have, um, I'm going to go back to this quick reference chart so you can see. There is, I also have the upper looper, and you can see there's a, a button in the inside that I push to down. I have a uh, blade position. You never want to have your blade, which cuts your fabric when you're doing an overlock stitch. You never want to have it up when you are doing a cover stitch because, of course, that would cut your fabric, and you only want to do a hem. There's also a little sewing table that it's a little um, piece and all sergers have it. You can see it's this one right here. And if I take it out and if I actually move these um, out, you can see right here and that little table comes out and there's three little positions right here where it could come out. And then when I'm doing my overlock, I have a different cover that I would put on it that doesn't cover up the blade. Now you can see this is the um, position that I said we we're putting it in the down position. I'm going to leave the tension in the middle here. You don't usually touch that much. This is the cover um, hem thread. And you can see I have it threaded all the way up here through that little hole. And this is the cover hem right here. You also can see that I have my Notion um, little drawer open because this is a wonderful, uh, these are wonderful tools. This is a, a little hexagon screwdriver that I used when I want to um, tighten my, my uh, needle when I want to put it in. And then I have another tool that I love and this is actually for threading. Oop, dropped it down there, so I want you to see it a little better than that. And you can see it's got a little um, diamond on it and a hook here up at the top. So I take that and run it down the needle where the diamond is and then just push it through. Just give it a little push. You can see there's a spring in here. And the needle threader will come out and the needle will actually, actually get threaded that way. And then you can pull it from the back and you have your needle threaded ball. And now some of us have automatic needle threaders too, but on this particular way, I just wanted to show you how easy it is if you have a little tool. Then this tool is another one that I think is great, this little notion, has got a place right in the front there, if you can see, there's a little hole for the needle. And that is, that goes right underneath there, and there's, you can't maybe see it this easy on here, but there is a flat spot on the back of your needle, and this way it holds it, so you can get that needle pushed up perfectly into your machine. So those three tools are really an important part, along with something else that I would suggest for everyone. And this is this little, um, I don't even know what they call it, but it's a fabulous little tool to get in and clean out all of your threads and especially areas where you normally can't get to. I mean, it just is a real, real good little See the lint that I pulled out of there already? And of course, a regular brush would work too. So that's talking about your needles, but I wanna go back to this um, little reference chart to show you this is what the back of the cover hem looks like. And this is what the front is, two rows of straight stitching. And I'm actually gonna do a wide cover stitch. I could have done a narrow cover hem, but on this particular fabric, it's a little heavier and the uh, wide will, I think, hold better. And the original stitch was done with a wide, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Uh, before I start to stitch, I almost always take a sample fabric and do a running uh, stitch to see if everything's set up right. And I did that already and it was working well. You can see that on the stitch length in here, let me put that on again, you can see it inside, is between three and four. Um, see if I can get my finger down there. I guess you can't see it that well, but do you see where it says lock too? That's where I've taken the blade, and this is the blade over here. That blade is now down because I've locked it in place. And if you go back to our threading chart, you'll see that's an um, important position. Again, 
you would never want it, your blade up because it would cut your fabric. We're doing a hem, and of course we don't want to cut fabric at that time. We're doing the little sewing table that I just showed you. Um, this is air threading, and I've already threaded it, but the uh, looper that is right there, the third one, and I'm going to again swing back here. Oh, I'm not making anybody dizzy. Um, you can see that this um, cover hem over here, see where it says upper U, L, lower, and C is cover. And then there's a little white knob on the right that you're going to push to thread the loopers. Honestly, it is the most unbelievable thing. See if I can get it down real close for you to see. When I'm threading, I turn this lever down. I've already threaded it. And it locks these loopers in place. And you see where that thread is way down there? It's a navy blue, so it's a little hard to see. It's right there. That Those tubes literally come together when this... Um, when I um, press the, um, the threading and I touch my hand wheel. And that locks those tubes in, and then I press the thread in this little tiny, this little button. I press it, I put, push the thread into the C, and then I touch that white button and zippo, it goes right through to the entire looper and brings it all the way up. And it's, there's a little tray in the other side of your uh, foot underneath, and the little extra threads are all caught in there. So it's all ready to go. This machine is all threaded now, all set up. I have it up here on my overlock. See how there's a wave? I have it on overlock. I have my thread tension and uh, my cover hem anywhere between zero and one. I don't really need to change. This, what's so wonderful about the baby lock is it really is an automatic tension. And you can see at the top there's three threads. I've got white up there too, but just ignore that. The uh, navy threads are the three threads that we are, um, or that I'm using. I have a speed control, which I'm gonna keep kind of in the middle. And again, they've all been threaded according to the uh, way the booklet has told me, and it's very, very easy to thread. So there's only three spools of thread for this wide. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the cover hem. I start, this is the uh, side seam, and this is the back. I don't start right in the middle because you don't want to see it that well where you start and end, but I do tie those threads off after I'm through. I just hand tie them, and then I put a little dab of your um, spray, uh, I mean your... Um, uh, let's see if I can find it here for you. The, um, here it is, the fray check. And that's a real important tool to have. <laughs> it's very, very good. It keeps your threads from going anywhere. And I can actually sew off the edge of uh, my fabric with the baby lock, but because I am not, this is a circular shirt, and so I don't need to do that. I'm going to put this back on here, and I'm going to put the cover back up. And you can see now, the what I'm doing for the measurement, see how there's a, a kind of a straight line right here? It's about an inch. And I'm using my foot too. You could um, do a three quarter inch, you could do an inch, you could do two inches. It's really up to you as to how wide you wanna make this, um, this uh, hem. But I always kind of follow the original design to see where it is, and that's approximately an inch. So I'll go ahead and do the sewing, and then I'll come back and show you what we have um, accomplished. After I've sewn about four or five inches, I stop, and I turn this to the wrong side, and I take my uh, tweezers, and I pull all three threads. There'll be one thread already on here, and then I pull the other two threads from the front. You see, they're now pulled back to the back. And then what I do is I hand tie these three um, threads and I'll put a little drop of fray check on it, but I am gonna wait with the fray check until I finish because the other stitch, when I come around to finish, will come over here and I'll go past this stitch and go over to here. And that's a little harder to find, but you'll be able to see them if you are careful where you pull the um, those uh, three threads also to the back and then I do the fray check. So again, I'll show you the finished product when, we're, uh, when I'm finished going around the edges. This is another tool that I wouldn't be without when I finish the edge. You can see I tied the um, threads first, 
And then I have this little hook up here that I pulled the threads through the seam so they don't get caught. They're, they're just in there, and now you won't have to worry about them unraveling. And it's called the Little Hooky <laughs> Serger Seam Hook. It's on our website, and I'll tell you, it is just something little like this. It's just amazing how easy it makes your life. So there's two little hooks. I keep them in the package because then I don't lose them, but... You know, they're, they're just great. And I'll finish the uh, edge the same way. And I still will put that little drop of fray check because then I know that it's completely secure. 